Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be discussing the early councils of the Church and how doctrine developed in those early times. Officially, there have been 21 ecumenical councils in Church history, but I think the first 10 will be enough for this season. Today, we'll be discussing the ninth official ecumenical council, the First Lateran Council. The name comes from an old Roman family, Lateranus, who lost their property to Emperor Constantine, who, in turn, later gave it to the church. On that land, which was part of Rome, several buildings were constructed, including the Lateran Palace, the Pontifical Lateran University, and the earliest of all the Christian basilicas, the Archbasilica of St. John Lateran. This council was held in a time, 1123 AD, when world leaders, lords, kings, and the like, had started trying to appoint bishops through the use of money and influence. Because of this, most of the canons added by this council were related to that topic, the proper way for bishops to be appointed, and the correct structure of religious authority within the church. Some of these issues had, of course, been raised before. In fact, in the previous year, an agreement had been reached between the Pope and the Emperor on this question in a document called the Concordate of Worms. That agreement was simply that kings, lords, and emperors could give worldly authority to the clergy, including the bishops, but only the church could give the authority to become a priest or a bishop or to perform the sacraments. The First Lateran Council's main purpose was to give those conclusions the binding force of an ecumenical council. At the council, it was reaffirmed that no one could validly become a bishop for money. Excommunicated people were forbidden to be received by the bishops of other regions, unless, of course, the excommunication was lifted, no one was permitted to appoint bishops without the proper steps or to entrust anyone with the care of souls without the permission of the bishop, and only a priest could become a provost, archpriest, or dean in the church. Only deacons could become archdeacons. Priests, deacons, etc. were again forbidden to live with women, except mothers, sisters, etc., and the laity were prohibited from managing church possessions or ecclesial matters like the sacraments, Marriage between blood relatives were also explicitly forbidden at this council, though basically everyone had already condemned them in other ways, church and state alike. This was also the time of the early Crusades, so special forgiveness of sins and other spiritual blessings were offered to those who helped the Christians in their efforts. Counterfeiters were condemned as oppressors of the poor, and people who tried to get money from pilgrims to Rome by means of tolls, fees, and just flat-out robbery were ordered to be deprived of communion. The Pope's rules about arson, public roads, and truces were reaffirmed here. Monks were prohibited from saying Mass, from hearing confessions, or publicly visiting the sick. Undoubtedly, people needed to be reminded that the sacraments were for priests, not monks or laity. The conquering or besieging of Rome was, of course, strictly forbidden. Priests were only allowed to receive their assignments to churches from bishops, not the laity, and abbots and monks weren't allowed to have the possessions of churches or bishops. Those who dared to harm anything or anyone belonging to the church were to be banned from the church. Certain false ordinations were condemned, along with the practice of redistributing the wealth of dead people against their will in some areas. Certain altars were protected from having their offerings removed by the laity, and a practice of making money by lending church benefits to people was condemned. Though this council dealt mostly with church rules and worldly affairs rather than heady theological truths, it did draw attention back to certain moral and ethical requirements that stand out, and it wouldn't be the last council to be held in Rome. Next, the Second Lateran Council. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.